1935, 36, the Depression, there was Buckhouse Square in Chicago. Buckhouse Square was a, is an area devoted to free speech ever since the beginning. It's opposite the Newbury Library of Chicago. It's near north side, the little park and square. And during its golden days, the 20s and 30s, before World War II, and certainly before television, there were speakers there on summer nights and spring nights. There were five soapboxes, and everybody, and they all had a chance to speak, and they, they worked out. It was sort of a production. Uh, communists spoke, anarchists, and wobblies, IWW, oh, oh, religious people, Moody Bible, Moody Bible sky pilots, they were told, a woman singing hymns, someone selling books on sex hygiene, and they were the key speakers, they were the stars. Often they were heckled, and of course they were masters at answering hecklers. But the one I remember so graphically was this little old lady, light-skinned black woman, Lucy Parsons, the widow of Albert Parsons, who lived for a long, long time. Imagine uh, poverty to a great extent. And Lucy Parsons would speak there on occasion, recall the event, but still speak about events of the moment, uh, fighting the Depression in favor of uh, Social Security, whatever it was in those days, unemployment compensation, fighting the idea of capitalism. And Lucy Parsons spoke. I remember she was fervent. I remember she wore a flowered hat. I'll never forget that. That's the part I remember the list. A flowered hat for the occasion. And later on, when the, when the, when the orators get off their soapboxes, uh, the hat is passed. They pass the hat. Nickels and dimes are tossed in. And Lucy's hat was being passed around. And the guy next to me who lived at the hotel, the world, an old-time wobbly IWW guy named Sprague, who lost his teeth, he was beaten up one day by vigilantes up in Seattle during the general strike. And old Sprague came to him, he took a dollar, one big dollar out of his pocket and dropped it in Lucy Parsons' hat. Now a buck to him was like 150 bucks be to someone today. Two hundred dollars, you see. So I remember that, but she spoke. The men, many didn't know who she was, but quickly the word spread about something called Haymarket.